myself on Zoom. Hold on. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. There we go. We are live. We are all the way live. Let me go ahead and fix my camera. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. There we go. We are live. We are all the way live. Let me go ahead and fix my camera. Wait a minute. I'm getting a bit of an echo. Hold on. Hold on. Let me check the echo. I'm getting a bit of an echo. Hold on. Yeah, that should kill it. All right. Hold on, yeah. All right. Maybe that's another. Do you have your uh, phone on? Not, yeah, it's on. I mean, no. You do you have earphones? Because I'm gonna say, put your earphones in your. Uh, it's not that. No, no, I'm on my, my computer. Put your earphones in your. Uh, it's not that. No, no, but mute your mic for a minute. Cause, okay, because it sounds like it might have been. Okay, because it sounded like it might have been her mic. It is. Is it? No, I still got an echo. No, I have an echo. Mm, hold on, y'all. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me make sure I got all of the things closed out. Hold on, y'all. Oh, you All right. Is that better? All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. 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 I think that's good. Right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. 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 I think that's good. Right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. I think that's good. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. I think that's good. I don't know why we need. All right, you guys, I don't if there's still an echo there. Okay. All right. Mm -mm. You guys, All right, can you hear me now? You can hear me now. I'm trying to see if we, that'll stop the echo. Okay, so, okay. All right, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. You can hear me now. I'm trying to see if that'll stop the echo. Okay, so, okay. All right, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. You can hear me now. I'm trying to see if that'll stop the echo. Okay, so, okay. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Do you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Did you um try to turn your volume down on your computer some? Okay, I think I solved the problem. All right, all right. I finally figured it out. All right, there we go. We are good to go. All right, yeah. all right. We are all the way live on Facebook. Nobody but Jesus. Amen and amen. Good morning. Well, good afternoon. Y'all, good evening. Listen, it's afternoon, it's morning, it's afternoon somewhere. So I'm talking to those people, right? Exactly. <laughs> but good morning, good afternoon, good evening to those of you that are watching me, that will catch me on the replay. Let me go ahead and let's see. All right. To those of you that catch me on the replay, uh, yeah. All right. And for those of you that are live, that are joining me live, all the way live, <laughs> hello, hello, Dr. Pelzer, go ahead, go ahead and do us a favor and share the video out, please. This is Zoom. And unfortunately, we cannot zoom to all of the platforms all at one time. So do me a favor, tag, tag your tag some folks in the video, share the video out, 
Who am I, you guys? Y'all know me. I am Property's Reverend Marika Monique Henderson. <laughs> I am, listen, I'm, I'm like Kiwana now. I'm your favorite self-publishing book company. No. <laughs> so Kiwana is our favorite financial strategist, um, but that don't work for me. Uh, no, but there is, listen, I'm a speaker. I'm a self-publishing coach. I'm a three-time, I'm the CEO of 5 Christian Publishing LLC and three-time best-selling Amazon author, right? Yeah. Um, now, now, outside of the titles of, yeah, I have to remember because it's like I'll be talking so fast, I will forget. Like, outside of the titles and the accolades, hello, hello, Author Minister Sharon Phillips is in the house. Listen, y'all come through Facebook, show up, right? Listen, I'm coming at this time of day to see if I can get better participation. So, you know, because other than that, y'all know me, I'll be heading towards the bed about now. Like, exactly. Yeah, like for real. <laughs> Uh, but exactly. outside, of, outside of this, look, Minister Linda gonna say it twice. Like, yeah, exactly. Y'all know her. <laughs> y'all know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> y'all, anyway, that's so funny. Um, I was thinking about my brand manager, Anisha Grant, uh, Anisha Garrett. Um, when she uh, in ATL, right? She like, okay, Reverend Rita, we don't want to disturb. You know, get you off your schedule. Like, no, you gotta have me back. About seven o'clock, it's bedtime, 7 30, 8 o'clock. Like, so we went out to eat. No, she wanted to take me out one night, and I'm like, please, can we do it tomorrow? Like, it's already eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, and I am so tired. Anyhow, uh, it's just in my body, right? Just it, it, when it's time to shut down, it just shuts down. Amen. But outside of the titles and the accolades, you guys, I am a faithful woman on a divine assignment to provide Christian ministers and leaders with the self-publishing strategies, guidance, and resources that they need to turn their stories into influential income-producing books that impact the world because your story can and will change somebody's life. Oh my God, listen, but it ain't even got, I am going to bring you guys in just a second here. I'm going to read you her bio, Minister Alinda miller Oh my goodness, let me tell you something. When I met this young lady, Liz, it's just been an amazing, amazing last two or three years since we've been connected, right? Um, and I'll tell you guys a little bit, you know, later, like how we met. But one of the things I want to really uh, talk about um, is how she's been able to really, um, it before it was even a thing. Right, let me read her bio. Let me read her bio, and then we're gonna go right into it. Because listen, she was doing this before there was even a, a word for it, a phrase for it. Right, all right, Minister Linda Miller. Y'all like who she talking about? I'm talking about Minister Alinda Miller. She is a servant of God. Look, mother of a movement. Did y'all see me put that? I like I love Linda. that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I love, love that. that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, mother of a movement. I love her. I love her. She said, see, that's what I'm talking about. Show up. Show up. Be great. Right? Right? It is so, so <laughs> yesterday to be playing small. Right? We're talking to a mother of a movement. Listen, she was, she was, she has been serving God from a young age. She was born in Detroit, Michigan during the, in, during the 60s when history was being made. Talking about from the Supremes to the Civil Rights Movement and the Detroit riots, y'all. This era was moving and shaking, and God was preparing a servant to do his will. Come on, from childhood, she has had a relationship with the Lord, and as she grew, it became stronger. Listen, prayer time with the Lord has always been her number one priority. I love that about her. When I think about her, yes, she is the mother of this movement. She calls it communication or talk time with the Lord. In early 2016, the Lord inspired her to share the prayers on media, on social media. Again, the Lord has taken her to another level to share marvelous and refreshing meditations with you through her writings. She holds a bachelor's degree from Central State University. Woo, woo, woo. That's where I wanted my daughter to go, but she didn't go there. She went to EMU, right? And, and, and Central, Forest, uh, Central State University is in Wilberforce, Ohio. She has a master's degree from Mary Grove College and a certificate from Geraldine Marvell Miller Wright Institute for Women in Ministry. What? Okay, we gotta talk about that. Like, I'm waiting. Like, I'm waiting. We gotta talk about that one later. 
Because I know some folks over there, I think. Alinda Miller also received her minister's license at Triumph Church Detroit under the direction of Pastor Solomon Kenlock Jr., presently under the leadership of Reverend Al C. Hamilton at John Wesley AME Zion Church. Well, I think she has served God in the body of Christ in several leadership capacities from office from the office of the pastor, from office of the pastor, congregational care, feeding the homeless, intercessory prayer, armor bearer, decision time counseling, and chaplain. She is blessed with one son who by the name of Anthony. Shout out to Anthony. Yes, Ooh. Anthony. Ooh. Yes, shout out to Anthony. And listen, Minister Linda Miller, you guys, is amazing. Hey, Dr. Holly. Yes, yes, mother of a movement. Listen, let me tell you guys how we met just briefly. And I'm going to recalculate it. If I miss something, just chime in anytime, Minister Linda. Amen. I've been knowing of her for years, right? Through her cousin, which was one of my best friends. Uh, so and I've been hearing about her for years. For years, she used to work right across the street from us. Right. And uh, <laughs> so I remember when when our um, when she would sneak out and say, I'm going to, over to see my cousin. Are we going to lunch? Oh, she would sneak out. Yeah. But she would just be going to catch up with you when you guys would be doing something during the lunch break or the break time or whatever. And but I didn't personally meet her until a few years ago. Amen. And I believe it was when I first met her. I do believe I, I was able to speak that right away. Right. Like, why haven't you right. wrote your book? Like right. That? Right, it right, was right. A, a conference. It was a women's conference. Y'all, I'm telling you, these women's conferences, that's why I like going to women's conferences. Prayer breakfast, teas, brunches. Like, I like all that. My, my bestie, Priscilla, she, man, she keeps me going to all the things. This is before the pandemic, of course. And man, I don't know if we ever get back out there like we once was. Um, mm -hmm. I hope we are able to one day. Um, but in the meantime, in between time, we, were, we met at this women's conference. Um, I don't even know how I got there. I didn't even know she was going to be there, did I? No, I don't think so. That's no. amazing. Yeah, I didn't even know yeah. you were going to be there. Because I was there to do take pictures. I was <laughs> the photographer, and I walked yeah. up, and I was like, I know you, but it was just something about your spirit. And I was like, I want to get to know her. I want to, like, glean off of her. But she didn't know that, but I did. And then that's when you just broke out and said, why you haven't written your book yet? And I just looked at you like, what? What you talking about? <laughs> yeah, and I think I noticed your makeup. And I think I noticed that's one of the things that I noticed about you um, before is it was your makeup. And we started talking and yeah, it just it just came up in me. You know, the spirit just came up in me. And I said, we've got a book in you. And then I believe I said, well, wait a minute. And you were saying something and not necessarily objecting, but you were saying something like, what would I write about or something? I don't know how we got on the topic of what your book would be about. And I said, well, like, hold that, wait a minute. Let me go to your Facebook. Right. Did I go to, I believe with that first meeting, I'm like, let me look at your Facebook. Let me see what you're sitting on, sis. Right. Because y'all are sitting on so much stuff, right? So much goodness, right? I that think, you don't even know it. Right. Because I think we were in conversation. I was like, well, I don't write about a lot, but I said, but I do go on Facebook and I do daily affirmations and everything to inspire people to encourage them about the lord you know just to be encouraged about how good god is how good god is one thing about minister linda god she, it just oozes out of her i like like so that's she is when i think about communicating with god and and that's the movement that is her movement refreshing meditations refreshing ministries she teaches people how to have better a better relationship with god through two-way communication, right? And so she was telling me that, and she said she did this thing, you did. You had this, this amazing group. Like she got a group of like over a thousand people like three years ago, <laughs> right? She didn't need, like I say, a lot of times we have stuff we don't, we are sitting on, we don't even know it, right? We don't even know it. Like right. we got so much, so many things in our real house, right? That we don't have to go outside and look for nothing. No. Right, you just need to see wise counsel come through and get with a minister Linda or a Reverend Rita or somebody, right? That's gonna help you get to the next level and whatever it is that you're trying to do. If you are trying to build your relationship with God, if you are trying to um have better communication with him, then Minister Linda is the go-to person for that. Like when I think mm -hmm. about intercessory prayer, prayer call, I'll be like, if she don't know, I don't even know if I said this to her before, but when I be thinking about things that she could do. 
that will just go right, fit right into her. Because she like, I ain't doing business, uh, Ram Rita. Uh-uh, that ain't what I hear. I, I'm not here. Like, she's straight ministry. <laughs> and it was so funny because so Reverend was like, uh, you, you need to monetize. I, and she said, because you're not making no money. And then she was like, well, then just give your stuff away then. Just give it away. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I mean, no, like. No, that ain't wait a minute. <laughs> But it was she funny. She didn't want to give it away, but I ain't letting her give away all the goodness. Look, right. she, gonna, she gotta make some money. Look, no. <laughs> but it was funny because we went back and forth about it. And she was like, well, why are you doing this thing? <laughs> but it was, it was, it was great because then she got to understand who, who I am as a person and where my heart desire is. Yes, I would like to make some coins off of it. Yes. But at the same time, I want people to be blessed by it because you just never know where people are in their life to pick up a book and it hits them right in the heart of where they are at that time. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, y'all, y'all know I'm all about building brands out here in these internet streets, businesses. I have a 501c3 empowering through the word ministries, right? But I ministries need to make money too. I had to tell a girl, look, ministries need to make money too, right? But right. she's not for the business. She's not for building the brands. She is like ministry that just oozes out of her. She will give everything away. If she, and I'm like, no, because you you do not want to be operating out of a deficit, right? I know right. what it's like to, to build ministry because I built one, right, over years. And I know what it's like to want to have the desire to feed the people at, at, you know that's hungry and to do Thanksgiving baskets and give Bibles to the kids that, and to do prayer breakfast, it costs money. It really, right. it takes money. Right. And so, um, so even ministries need to make a profit, right? So she is published on Amazon. Don't get it twisted now. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. And we're going to show you where to get these books in just a second. But so she is published on Amazon, but she is not into building a brand or a business, for, but she is just ministry. And she made that very clear right and y'all because y'all know man i'm talking about other stuff minister, 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 she ain't for that so and but it's but still i'm still called right to the five-fold minister to teach you how to monetize your message and become a self-published author right, right? that's what i do now what minute so i looked at minister linda's facebook profile and i'm just you know her facebook page where she got all these like 50 11 folks in and she don't know <laughs> so i like I'm looking at it like, girl, girl, oh, girl, we got a 30-day journal for sure. Right. For sure. For, for sure. sure. And she leveraged that Facebook content, y'all. But see, that's what consistency, oh, my God, I hear the Holy Spirit say. But see, that's what consistency will get you. Mm-hmm. Minister Linda was as consistent over there in that community for, um, well, I think it was almost two years when yeah, I met you. Yep. Yeah. About two, two to years. three years. Yeah. So she has a lot of content in there. She'll never write another word. Oh my gosh, she has plenty enough content. So we were able to take the Facebook. So those of you, those of you, let me start right there and just put in this, this plug. Right. Like for those of you, <laughs> those of you that say, I am not a writer. I keep telling you, you, I'm not a writer either. I am not a writer, but I am an author, right? I am right. an author. And you do not have to be a writer to become a self-published author. You do not have to be a writer to learn to monetize your brilliance. Oh my yes. God, that just jumped in my spirit. <laughs> to monetize your brilliance. Yes. You better come on and say that. To monetize, monetize your, brilliance. your brilliance, right? Yes. Listen. And so you don't have to be a writer. In fact, so Minister Linda, so now they got this, they got this term. I don't know if you've heard it yet, but it's called low content book. Right. I heard it through you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I just learned about it a few months ago. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, but that, but see, but that's what God to do for you. See, you was doing it way before they even called it a thing. Right. And you know, it's all interesting when I, uh, I don't know why this story just came to my head, but somebody was trying to throw shade on me. Right. And th- yes, somebody tried to throw shade on me. And then they said to me, oh, you call yourself out there writing a book. Is it a book? How did they put it? Is it a book or is it a journal? Whichever one it is, you need to go and look, look at it and read it for yourself. I was like, oh, are we hating? What? 
Yes. Okay, so where was the shade? I don't get it. They were they were mad at me, but they thought they were throwing shade, you know, trying to come at me like you call yourself an author. You 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 got a book, right, 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 right. Well, what do they have? Right. But I just thought about that. I was like, really? Cause they tried to do it like in public and throw shade on me. Oh, you call yourself an author. You you call yourself, you need to be the first one to be reading it. And I was like, wow. 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 Okay. Well, yeah, she is an author. And um, yeah, <laughs> you can get this on Amazon.com <laughs> and um, yeah, like, okay. So is that to say that journal journal creators are not authors? But they are, because you gotta take okay. time. You got to take okay. turn. But then okay. it, it could have been a, a point of jealousy too. Yeah, to, yeah. To throw shade. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, for whoever that person was, they are called low content books. Okay. <laughs> right. And people buy them. They're all in the Christian bookstores. I went and I was doing research this weekend. And I saw so many of them and some of them I opened up and it was nothing in there but blank pages. I was shocked, but they were in the Christian no bookstores. Those are no books. But you know what? What, what happens is this, you know, and, and I just want to say something to, to that person is people don't have the attention span that they used to. People don't have the time nor the attention span that they used to to read big 200 and 300 page books. Right. right? But these like the three fresh and meditation 30 day journal with these journal prompts over 30 days, you ask the question, you give the script and then you get the journal prompt. That is 30 days of meditation of being in God's word. Right. right? That's right. 30 right. days of journaling, writing down. And he said, if it ain't written, you ain't committing. And I'm just saying, I'm paraphrasing that y'all. Yeah. Back at two and two. But you right. know what I'm saying? But it's the importance of writing stuff down. And he talks about that in, in in other ways too throughout the Bible. So yeah, I, I think the person is just jealous. And, um, you know, but that's how the enemy will come. He will come and try to tell you, listen, yeah, but not that she didn't just do it one time, y'all. She did it three times. Okay, three times this far. Amen. And let me tell you something. Um, this one, I, I'm just still holding it up. I wish I had the new cover. Because that new cover and that new interior, baby, is sweet. Thank you. Thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you. Because not many people allow us to do. One of the things that I love about Minister Linda, first, she, she always says this. I don't get it. I don't get why people are not just everything <laughs> you throw out there. Like, I don't get why they don't act on your stuff. It is just so good. And that's, that's some of the things that you, you say to me all of the time, right? I, I just right. don't get it. I don't get it either. But anywho, they'll get it sooner or later, right? I mean, right. they're going to pay me a lot more later. Right. <laughs> so, right. But, so these low content books, you were doing them, Minister Linda, before there was even a term, before I heard of this term, okay. right? The low content books. But this repent, uh, this refreshing meditations is a journal that will help you to connect back to God and become yeah. rejuvenated by being closer to him. I, I love this one here. And I have them. Um, I have two copies of this, as a matter of fact. I like to have two copies. So one, I can just keep nice and neat for show. And then the and one, then the I, one I, I just actually write. do my journal in there. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. And then, and then we have our very wonderful Bible study notebook. And I love this one. Um, your, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalms 119 um, and 105. 119. 105. And this is a Bible study number. See, Minister Linda, look, when she's teaching that Bible and preaching that Bible, she is adamant. You better have you a pen and a Bible and a Bible study notebook so that you can take notes. And I love this because, like Minister Linda, really, you kind of pointed out to me how the top here is a, is it a personal devotion, a Bible study, or a sermon? Mm -hmm. And when you said that when we were on the phone creating this, going over it, right. I was like, yeah, that is pretty cool, huh? That right. Is cool. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put some check boxes though next to it. I think yeah, I'm because like you gotta. If, if anybody is like me, I have like notes of papers all over the place. 
from notes, from listening to different sermons. You want to know where they're coming from. Was it a devotion? Because when you're reading a lot, you want to know, was that during a devotional time? Was that during a time that I was watching a sermon? Was that a time that I was just in my own personal reading and studying to be able to go back to your notes and say, oh yeah, this is, you know, this is this, this is that. Oh yeah, I remember that. And then, you know, when you have that in, you got to be able to pull it up, but you can also recall it to your remembrance because then you can just flip through the book and be like, oh yeah, that was a devotional. And the great thing about the, the journal for uh, taking notes is that, um, like like uh, Reverend Rita was saying, the check mark, you know what it is, you know what it is, because if you're like me, you just got scraps of paper all over the place or notebooks all over the place, but now you got everything in one spot at that time. So once you finish that one, you can just purchase another one and keep on going, Come check it off at book one, book two, book three. I, I just got off the phone with, that's what, when we were holding on earlier, when you came in a little early, I was on the phone with a client uh, a wonderful man of God, and he wanted to add that to his his quarterly journals. He said, "We're well, Reverend Rita, how much to add volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four? So I think, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing now. He's like, yeah, Reverend Rita, because they got to know which volume they buy. I'm like, okay. Right, okay. right. So, so, right, exactly. And you know what? I like, now, not that we, we, we don't steal nobody's stuff, but I like sometimes when I'm listening to a sermon or if I'm in Bible study, because I like to keep these types of things because maybe the man of God says something and mm -hmm. not that I want to take his stuff and preach it as my own, but I want to refer back to something that he said. You want to reference back to it. I want to reference back to it. Yeah. Right. I try to give credit always to, right. you know, you know, who, whoever. And, and let's just take a pause right, right now and thank God for Bishop T.D. Jakes. Amen. It's a few years ago, I, 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 I caught him. Amen. I'm Prophetess Reverend Rita Monique Henderson. For those of you that don't know who me, who I am, I am Prophetess, I am a Prophetess Reverend Rita Monique Henderson, a speaker, self-publishing coach, CEO of 5 Christian Publishing LLC, and three-time Amazon best-selling author. And I am here on the no factor. The no factor is the knowledge needed to overcome and win. I heard Bishop preaching a few years back, and he was talking about Daniel 11 and 32b. And that, that part of the scripture says, them that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits, right? And that is called the no factor, right? Because them that know God can be, it's the being, it's the knowing him that we're able to have our being and the being that we're able to do. So right. it's it's like, oh my God. So shout out to Bishop T.D. Jakes, who has taught me a lot, a lot. So I don't like to, I don't take anybody's stuff. I just like to refer back to it. So I like stuff like this. But I can say, oh, yeah, that was such and such a sermon. He said, okay, woo, woo, woo. And beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I'm going to get my planner because I, I had to get two. I know I had to get you gotta two. You got to get you two of them because I know the other one is all jotted up. <laughs> I had to get me two planners too because I had to have one. <laughs> and then I got the one I got all my stuff in because I love it. I love it. Love it. Yeah. I love it. I feel, you know what? And, and, I'm not one to, to write stuff down and I need to. Mm -hmm. I'm not one to write a grocery list, but I've been but doing that. And okay. I feel so much more on organized. top of stuff. Yep. Organized, yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an organized person, but I'm not used to writing stuff down. Right. And now that I'm writing stuff down and I got my goals, you know what I'm saying? I feel right. so much more empowered. Is the That's word. I, yeah. I feel so much more on top of stuff. I feel so much more empowered. I know what I'm working on. You know, I got my other little notes. You know, I know at what time, and I my handwriting sucks, y'all, but I know at what time I'm supposed to be doing what, and it's right here. So, right. and I don't feel like I'm missing something. Like, right. oh, I'm supposed to do, what am I supposed to do? What is that thing? Exactly, exactly. You know, and it's, it's interesting because if I don't write down I feel overwhelmed. And if I feel overwhelmed, then I'll shut down. And that's something that I learned about myself. I was like, oh, I know I got something to do. And then I'll go sit down because I'm too overwhelmed to really think about it. So it's good to write it down. Yes, I learned that about myself. I, really? I, I to, yeah, I learned that. I'm like, oh my God, I'm a shut down person. But like you said, if you have it written down and you're organized and you know what it is that you're gonna do, like you said, you feel empowered. Now you got to 
Now you got a grip of your life. You got a grip of your day. Can't nobody dictate your day and tell you how to how to do it because it's already done because you have it written down and you you can't let nobody, as they say, take you off your square because you are already focused in what it is that you need to do. Yeah, I love it. And I'm so bad with like not looking at my, my calendar on my phone or not looking. And then somebody said, well, can you do tomorrow at 2? I sure can, girl. And then I didn't been in schedule two things at the same time. I had three things, y'all, for real. The other day I had, was it Friday? Friday, I believe it was. I had three things at the same time. Wow. I know, right? Was it wow. Friday? I, whatever day it was, I had three I, <laughs> I did it well. I handled it well, though. I did. I had. To, I, I. I was juggling, but I was like, oh, we. But, but so you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. I'm, but one thing that I learned with having the um, the planner is you'll learn how to say no. You will learn how to say no because now you can take the time to look at your planner and say, nope, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Even though you want to do it, but you don't wanna overextend yourself. But since you have the notebook, your notebook is your guide of how your day is going to be. It's your guide, it's not everybody else's guide, it's your guide of how your day will be managed. Yeah, I love it. And then you know what, I do my little check mark. And what I did, I got a little system going, right? And I think <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so cool for this. Oh. I'm so cool for this because real CEOs write stuff down. They keep a calendar. They get up and I look, I'm a CEO of Five. I, I, we're trying to get out of that employee mindset and into the employer mindset. And right. so what I do is what I really, what I don't do today, I can carry over to the next day. So I already got, if I don't do it here, Right. You know, if I didn't shoot all the videos that I was planning to shoot with this makeup on, then hey, I'm getting makeup done again in a few days, you know, and then I could just, and I, Come I'm on. just saying, this is my life. As, look, as an entrepreneur, yes, this is my life. And so, and I love it. And I love it so much. But so, we're going to um, get you to do your own so you can save some coins. I know, right? I know. I need to get the, yeah, I need to, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got to get me together over here. Right. That, that would be really nice to learn how to be. You talking about empowered, right? That would really, that would be so crazy. Right. Crazy. Like, I could, I could probably fire my makeup artist. She's not going to like it, but I could, I mean, not so far, much fire, but maybe just lay her off a little while. Yeah, just, you know, when you have big major events, you know, your photo shoots or yeah. <clears throat> commercials, or when you start being on national TV, then yeah, she's going to be there to make sure you taking care of. You ain't got to be stressed out. Is my lash on right and all that? Because she going to handle all of that because I see it coming, you know? Yes, 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 Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. Let's check and see if we got some questions. Dr. Pelzer says, beautiful. Um, there are a lot of wows. Um, yes, mother of a movement. Yes, yes, yes. Good evening, Dr. Holly. Um, yes, yeah, so, um, oh my goodness. So let's talk about this. Since we have, we met each other on that day at that women's conference. And that's amazing because a lot of people that I know locally, that's where we met at. Mm -hmm. Like at a women's conference, a prayer breakfast, in church. Right. Come on now, in church. I love it. I love it. Meeting all these amazing women, right? Because I'm in the right place, right? Doing the right, right thing at the right time. So over the years, so now they got this, this concept. Now they call it the low content books. Now it is a thing. Okay. You should have told them it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. <laughs> A it's whole a whole thing. thing. It's a whole vibe, y'all. No, the low content books are a whole vibe. You guys been watching me do them for a couple of months. I, the done for you products. That's yeah. what I want to say. I love the theme. This is one of the theme of this thing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I love it. Daily planner. I love it. And that's what I feel like when I am writing in this planner. And I got to refer back to it. I leave it right here because all day I'm like in it, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like I can meet that goal. Like, I feel like there's nothing I can't do. Right. Then I do. I do. I work right in this planner, looking at the times. It's like, okay, as long as I got a, a, the schedule, 
Right. As long as I don't know what I'm going to do, when I'm going to be doing it, as long as I don't, oh, you know, overbook stuff. Right. I feel like I can. I feel like I can do all things. Like I, can, I can't through Christ who strengthens me. Right. Like, okay, God, this is what we doing today. This is what yep. we doing today. Yeah. Sometimes I don't get all the videos done or all whatever I need to be done done, and I carry over. But I, I feel so empowered with this one. So you guys, this is also available on Amazon.com. Um, Minister Linda, Minister Linda Miller. This is her. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Daily planners, Planner. daily planners, and then we got the Bible study notebook. Also, the word is my light. Well, it's your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my back path. Her Bible study notebook. Look, I got two, I got two of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I just yeah, you like it. And then refreshing meditation. Go and check it out. The new cover is so now. This was cool. In 2020, yeah. when it was published, it was cool. It was like, yeah, it was nice. Um, but, but a lot of people were blessed by it. When I tell you, a lot of people were blessed by it. They said so, they were so thankful for it. They was like, oh, thank you so much. It just really inspired them. It really encouraged them. You know, they did say they felt closer to God. It made them want to read their Bible more, you know, and that and that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to ignite that where you want to learn more about God, you know, hear what it is that he's trying to say to you to be able to help you to guide you through your life. So it is just awesome. And, you know, just keep you uh, strengthened and empowered. And look, you can do all things through Christ who strengthen you. Your day will be fine because you're going to think about that word that, that he just poured into you and it keep you happy. When somebody try to bring you down, you're going to be like, what? I got, I got Jesus on my side. What you talking about? Listen, because you in that word. And that's what the, the purpose of that journal is to inspire you, to re, uh, refresh you, to renew you, to rejuvenate you. That's the whole purpose of that. And it feels good to be that way. Cause when something come your way, that's devastating as other people would say you'll be like i ain't worried about that because i know what my daddy said i know what god said i'm i'm good yeah it just oozes out of minister linda it just oozes <laughs> all out of her pores like yes yeah, she is the mother of a movement and that movement being um what do you call it? talk time with god Oof. talk time with god that is that is her I and mean, her signature book when she birthed that signature book yeah um, whether it be a devotional journal or, or spiritual devotion, whatever it's going to be, I know it's going to draw. She already has a following over there. Um, you can find her at Refreshing um, Ministries on Facebook, right? That's the name yes. of the group, yep. Refreshing Ministries. I, is, she has a, a thousand, over a thousand people over there. She has a movement going, Refreshing Ministries. Yes. Um, so you can find her there. You guys can get her books on Amazon.com. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else we want to talk? What else we want to talk? What y'all want to ask Minister Linda? Any questions for Any me? Questions? I'm, willing, I'm willing to answer them. Yes, yes, yes. It was something I wanted to ask you. Um, yeah. you're always speaking somewhere on somebody's platform or pulpit or what you got coming up? Um, oh, actually for Christmas. Listen, I... listen, like, uh, uh, <laughs> Well, I had to think, you know, for Christmas, I'm supposed to, uh, I'm being blessed. I'm not supposed to, I don't, I, I don't want to use it like I have to. It's a blessing that I'm being asked to provide um, a sermon for Christmas, Christmas uh -huh. Eve. So um, I'm studying for that now to get the word to come out just the way he wants it to come out. But yes, that's what I have coming up uh, for December. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes. Awesome. It's such um, a blessing, you know. You just you know, when when God calls you out, you you just really don't know what he's going to do, you know. Growing up, I knew there was something different about me. I knew that I love the Lord and all of that. And I remember people used to just come up to me like, Are you in ministry? I'd be like, nah, you know, and I mean it wasn't negative because I looked up to people who were in ministry because I think that's just an awesome calling. And then when he chased me down like a couple of times and I'm just like, 
okay. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay. Even when it came time for me to become a licensed minister, I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't need that. I can go on and do something else. But I know the Lord know me and he know my heart. I don't need no title to do what he has called me to do. But still, all in all, he still keep pulling on me. And I'm just now a very willing vessel of what he is calling me to do. Amen. And and now he's he's look now she carries the title as an author, self-published author, speaker. What are some of the things that you see in the future you doing that you have not done? Mm. Maybe in the past. Oh, oh, this thank you, Holy Spirit. That's what I want to say. When I think about your overall ministry and stuff, because I was talking about business, you know, I I hear these internet streets, you know, it's like okay, monetize, get your business, get your brand. But you were like, no. And when I saw was, I don't know if I mentioned it to you before, but those prayer shawls and those prayer pillows. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she said, yes, yes. yes. That's, like, that's what I see. I really see you doing um, like a whole line of, of, of things that are, that helps us to have this better relationship. Relationship. Mm -hmm. God through communication so and to understand tell me about that I see it in the spirit but what do you what do you see with that you know what that just that just uh that just sparked me (laughs) (laughs) that just sparked me because I actually have been thinking about prayer shops you know um in, in a, and I want to do studies on it to really understand the whole meaning of it and the whole why it's made the certain way, why it has so yeah. many tassels, why it's the limb, the sickness, you know? the yeah. Right. I want to understand all that so that, like you say, if God allow me to birth that into my brand, then yes, I would like to be able to, that when people get it, they understand what they're doing. It's just not something to play with. Just like I see people to me, which I think is insulting, play, wearing rosaries around your neck and you don't know what it really stands for. You know, it's not a neck of list, but understand what the meanings of the beads are. You know, you people just wear, oh, I like it, so let me wear it. No, that know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Know what you're wearing. Understand what it is. It is prayer beads, you know. But if you ain't praying, don't be just trying to throw it on just to make people think, you know, it's a fashion brand. No, don't do that. No, that's just that's just disrespectful. <laughs> but um what do I see myself doing in the future? I, you know what? I don't know. I just, I see myself speaking. I do see myself speaking uh, um, about um, just in ministry, just different things. I know one of the things that, that he's going to pull out of me is me talking about COVID and to understand yeah. um, having faith. And yeah. having that relationship with him yeah. and understand just because you go through the hard times, he's not, he is with you. And I guess for me, it's a testimony of what happened. Yes, I do know a lot of people had COVID, but I can only talk about my testimony that happened to me because when I was on my bed and about to die, trying to think that I'm going to control myself from dying. He had to show me who was in charge. But w- with all of that going on, it just made me want to have a closer relationship with him to know that I can't, I don't rely on man. I rely on him. He just uses man to help guide me through life. You know what I'm saying? He uses them to help me to maneuver through the world and through life. So, it, you know, just for me, different um situations just help me to become closer to him you know he allows me with all that going on with COVID he has because I have become closer to him and praying and talking to him and basically praying is nothing but a conversation with God that's all it is it ain't nothing special about it just like you go talk to your boo your bae or whatever you talk sweet nothings that's what you do with God you tell him all your secrets and you talk about what you want what your goals what your aspirations that's what a conversation with God is, right? But with all of that, he's been showing me different things in life, like things that I need to repent for, that I have done, that I 
that's I hadn't thought about, but that were sins that wasn't right to people, you know, allowing me to repent on what I, what I did. I may have been a young child not knowing, but now he brought it to my remembrance to let me know that was a sin. So he's allowing me the opportunity to repent and ask for forgiveness. He's been allowing me to just be closer to him. He's been allowing me to see things in the spiritual realm opposed to carnal. When you sit and you look at things carnally, you don't see the bigger picture. I, he allows me to see the bigger picture of what it is that he wants. And it's just awesome. And, you know, I just think about the Travis Scott situation. That was so monumentally spiritual on so many levels that there was an opportunity for people to repent because some of them said i feel like i was in hell but you ain't never been to hell to know mm -hmm. what hell feel like but this is the opportunity for you to pray to god to get a closer relationship with him so that you won't go to hell because if you think that's what hell feel like i feel sorry for you i, I wouldn't want to be in there the, you know, gr grinding of the teeth. They were clawing for their lives to get out of there. So, you know, think about hell. Hell is the same way. You burning forever. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't want to burn forever, then repent. Ask for forgiveness. Pray and, and fast so that you can have that closer relationship with God. So um, on the platform of me talking somewhere, yes, I see myself either talking about COVID, talking about how to have a relationship with God, how prayer will encourage you and motivate you and just to have that relationship with God. I love it. I love it. I, I see you doing some amazing things. And she kept saying repent and repent. And it brings to my remembrance the scripture that um, she used for the acts that you use for, for the refreshing meditations. Mm -hmm. um, and then I hear the Holy Spirit saying, use the same scripture for your signature book. Because that's what you, you, you're going to be telling people to do. Repent, repent. That mm -hmm. repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord. That's your, the scripture that you use on refreshing meditations. Right. And, and, you, and you live by that thing. You, you know, you, you say he's showing you things that you did even as a young child because that's your heart's desire. Mm -hmm. It's to know, where, show me where I've gone wrong, mm -hmm. Right. Show me right. where I'm going wrong so I can get it right. I I, I said that, that that's what your heart yeah. wishes to for. Get, to get it right and then you can live life freely. You know what I'm saying? You can breathe. You don't have to worry about at night that you have trouble sleeping because you worried about this or you worried about that. Once you have gotten everything or you think that you have gotten everything off of you, God's going to give you that sweet rest where you can lay in his bosom and know that he rocking you to sleep and you don't have nothing to worry about. Nothing. You just nothing, go nothing. to sleep, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing to worry about. Yeah. Even right. like some of the situations that I'm going through now, I'm not, I don't, I'm not losing sleep. I'm not worried. It's like, Somebody told me today that I was being very patient. And I said, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. I said, because if you would have caught me years ago, my patience was out the, up, off the roof. I, I didn't have any. But now it's like, I'm very patient because I know that we have to take one day at a time and that God is going to handle everything. Why am I going to trip out about something I can't even handle? And that I don't even have Ain't control. that one of the proofs of the spirit? Huh? Ain't that one of yeah, the fruits yeah, of the spirit? Of the and you should know about yeah. the tree, by the fruits in there. Yeah, You're I was just like, <laughs> you know, and then you can speak your truth too. When you are clear and you are free, you can speak your truth. You don't feel any guiltiness. You don't feel any remorse. Dang, you don't no feel anything. Yet. It's just okay. you speak the truth. Okay. And what they say, the truth will set you free, but you are already free because you know that God got you as long as you know that you're not doing any malice. You're not speaking wrong about anybody. You're not lying. And, and let me tell you, when you have a relationship with God and you think you're going to tell a lie, oh my gosh, the littlest lie, he going to say something. You're going to be like, Ugh. like, okay, <laughs> let me, Lord, I'm sorry I did that. Because then you're going to, he's going to ask you, well, why did you say that? Why did you, what, what did it benefit for you to tell a little what you he might gonna check you. Little. Oh, he's gonna check. Yeah, he's gonna check you hard. And he then gonna you're gonna feel you. like, oh. He's gonna oh, check yeah. you. Even, yeah. even about my vocabulary, words that I say that not not a cuss words, but just words that I say he's even working with me. But he's what is what the scripture say? He chastens, 
He chases he who he loves. He loves. Yep. Yes. He's yep. going to bring about that correction. Yeah. Right? And you know, and it's so funny, like sometimes when I'm at work and I know that I need to do something and I know that I can manipulate it. And I'll be like sitting there like, do I do it or do I not? But it's not that I'll get in trouble for it. It's just to, to help out the situation. But he, he'll he still get on me about that. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. You know, if anybody <laughs> watched Facebook, they have this little phrase. People say, don't do it. Don't do it. Nah, mm -hmm. girl, I had to go ahead and do it. You know, <laughs> but it's not that. Don't do it. Just don't do it. And he'll make you feel like that. And he was sitting there like, okay. But he works it out. He worked mm -hmm. it out for me today. I'm sitting there like, oh, Lord, I got these two cases that's due today. What am I going to do? I hadn't touched them, right? And then guess what? They said cancel. I was like, thank you. Because like, I was like, thank you, Holy Spirit. Because I'm like, that's because I had that relationship. And I believe in my heart. Because I have that relationship with him, things are going to work out for, for my good. You know yes. what I'm saying? So I yes. just, I truly believe that. And, yeah. and trust. I hear a trust. I hear a lot of trust. And that oh, yeah. and you can have trust when you have a relationship with him by way of communication. Because if you have a relationship with him, you're talking to him. You're communicating with him. You're having intimacy with him. You're communing oh, yeah. with him. Right? Right, that's it, what it is. Intimacy. I love the word Come into me and intimacy. See. Into me, uh, intimacy. You see. Into yes. me, you see. You yes. see all of me. All of and he yes. let you see all of him. Oh my God, that is just so awesome. So listen, once you start doing all that, you'll find yourself in, waking up in the middle of your sleep, not even really waking up, but you'll catch yourself talking to him and cracking up laughing. Like I find myself cracking up laughing like, okay, Lord, you tripped him to die. And you know, but it's like, I'm dreaming. He didn't show me something, but it'd be like something so silly or whatever. And then, I, you know, I just find myself talking like, you know how they say people talk in their sleep and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll feel myself like talking in my sleep, but I'm talking to him. Okay. And it's just like a constant thing, but it's beautiful. And then yeah. you'll start getting to the point people you used to talk to all the time, you don't even want to talk to them because it's like their conversation don't really matter anymore. It's nothing, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter. It's not relevant relevant to your life yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point in time anymore yeah. because now you're talking to God. Like yeah. I'm talking to God all day long. Like, oh Lord, hold up the time. I know I'm late. Oh Lord, please forgive me. I'm sorry. You know, but you're being honest. And when you're honest, he can work with you. Just like we tell our children, tell me the truth. So that yeah. I can work with you. You know, if you lie to me, it's going to cause problems. It's going to be consequences. So I don't never want no consequences with the Lord because they ain't fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. This this woman, look, she's amazing, amazing woman of God. And I just love talking to her. Um, <laughs> I love talking to her because I get so much, so much from her. And the spirit is just always just talking and we just vibe in the spirit and um I, I love it so and she just really has helped me her refreshing meditations has helped me to for me even to have a closer relationship with God by way of communicating right I, so I was talking to you a few weeks back I said like five six weeks back and say look I need to get back in my position of prayer remember right. We were yeah. talking about that. And as I got back into that position of prayer, God is, you know, and he always loves that, you know, but I love waking up early praying. And, and, and so we talked about that and I'm able to share that with you and right. intimate moments that we have. Um, and, and so it's just an amazing, uh, this is national authors month, you guys, the month of November, and this is minister Linda Miller. She's one of our five old publishing authors. You guys, if you have any questions, Minister, uh, author minister Sharon Phillips said, yes, I do that. Just wake up talking to him in the middle of the night. And yes, I love it. <laughs> yes, it's amen. awesome. Dr. Pelzer says, amen. Patience is truly a virtue. And that's what I heard. I heard that's the fruit of the spirit. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. You should know them by the fruits that fruit. they bear. Yes. Lord, when you were saying that, that's what I heard. Right. Um, 
Um, Denise says, how do you build a brand being a Christian author? Join us inside the Aspiring Christian Author Self-Publishing Support Group. We try to talk about all the things like that, pertaining to building up an author's brand, what we call an author, being an authorpreneur. Amen. Minister Linda is, has a heart for ministry. She ain't trying to do business necessarily, but ministry. But you're, And you can have a ministry. We're yeah, even doing yeah. the, the shawls and, and the prayer pillows is what I see. Right. Even there prayer, you go. Even yeah. prayer benches. I don't know if you for me with prayer benches, but yeah, that could even be something that um you could look into. But I see you doing things um in, in that area, mm -hmm. right? In in the uh I don't know if you if you do the talits or or not, but even the Jewish prayer cloths, the uh right. the prayer shawls, shawls, right, the lap, the lap. Cost. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What do oh, you call them? Yeah. Yes. I but, see you doing so those. I can do those. However, we got to think about how, <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny when I say this, <laughs> but how many women still wear dresses? They not trying to come in dresses and stuff. And, and you know, the show be modest and everything. And you know, you can do it. I mean, and some people might get it and say, oh, I got it. Yeah. But then put it up. They actually but, use them anymore. Yeah, you know, yeah. I use mine because I love dresses. Yeah, I know you will. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She, I know she does. Um, I wear mine, yes. Then if you wear yours, there's other women out there, yes. that I, I, I just believe, yeah, there's 7 billion people on the planet. Right. And yeah. some people do go to church, so let me get that out. You I'm, know. Just, I'm just saying, I see that, you know, maybe you just do them custom so you don't carry a lot of them. Right. But yeah. you, you do a few of them here. Right. That makes saying. sense. Yeah. 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 Something. All right, you guys. Well, this has <laughs> been amazing. This has been an amazing interview. Um, again, well, I'm going to let you tell them how to connect with you. Um, and then I'm going to close it out. I'll say some last words and close it out. Okay. Um, you guys, if you got any questions, y'all put them up in the chat right now. Yeah. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, put them in the chat or you can always reach me, Minister um, Alinda Miller, with at Refreshing Ministries LLC on Facebook. You can always reach me, reach out to me on Facebook. I also you can also get an awesome word on Friday with Refreshing uh, Refreshing Friday Focus Friday. Focus Friday. I'm sorry. Focus yes. Friday. Yes. And look, th that Focus Friday that is nothing but a great thanks to the Reverend Rita. Listen, that was her that birthed that into me. Oh my gosh. It was the story behind that was so funny because I had just got out of COVID. I was in COVID, but you had already mentioned about people coming on every day and doing something for 15, 10 to 15, 15 to 10 to 15 minutes. And I would have went through COVID and then I thought about it and I was like, I don't know, you know, like that. And it was funny because when God provoked me. He was like, not provoked me, but he said to me, go ahead and reach out to her. But I'm still in my mind, right? Oh, I want to do it, but I want to do it on a, a Friday. But Friday was already taken, but I was just still going to be obedient. And I said, well, I'll do Wednesday, but I really want Friday. Who reaches out to me and say, no, you can have Friday. And I was like, no, somebody else already have it. So I can't do it because somebody already else has it. And she was like, no, you got it because they backed out and you can do it and you can call it Focus Friday. And I was like, oh, okay. I don't know what I'm going to say, but okay. And she was like, you got this, you got this. And I started it during COVID and oh my God, it is just such amazing. Um, it's just so amazing because the words, that God give me to tell the people is just, it's just so interesting because before God would give me almost a whole week to get the message done and everything. But now he, he makes me wait. And the first time he made me wait, it scared me because I was like, <laughs> Oh my God, I got to go here on focus. Right. And I have nothing to talk about. I don't know what to talk about, but what happened is that's where God said, I need you to rely on me. I, you want to give the word to the people, but allow me to give you the words to give to the people. And when mm -hmm. I tell you, it has blessed me because of the simple fact, I'm not only talking to my 
people or the people out there. I'm talking to myself. He's telling me stuff about myself on what it is that I have to do. So it is such a blessing. But I'm going to tell you the other blessing from all of that is when people walk up to you and tell you, oh my gosh, you just don't know that your Focus Friday be right on time. And it blessed me. I actually had a member, a male member from church yesterday walk up to me and say, hey, I just want you to know in our household, it ain't only one set of eyes watching you. It's two set of eyes watching you and your messages be right on point. That right there was like, really? Because you, because I had to learn stop looking at the numbers because who who need to see it at that time is going to see it but the information is still there people can always go back and you just never know who you are blessing so you just have to be obedient to what god is telling you to do because i'm gonna tell you sometimes i'll be like i ain't going on there because i ain't heard nothing but then or i say oh i really kind of don't feel like it but i said but how can i not feel like sharing God's word when I know that I trust him and I believe him and he gonna give me a word to give to his people so I just have to be patient and wait on the Lord and when I tell you he give me wonderful messages I am just so thankful and I'm thankful to Reverend Rita for pouring that into me and letting it be a blessing from every I, I think I only missed one Friday maybe one or two Friday out of this whole two years of being doing focus Friday and I'm just elated ecstatic and thankful thank you so much Reverend that, that is amazing to God be all of the glory that and while you were talking you could do so much with that focus Friday like that's a whole brand by itself like not like no seriously y'all y'all i talk to y'all i'm always talking and i'm thinking because i'm always thinking of how you can elevate how you can leverage stuff how can you make things easier for you and then at the same time use that um and repurpose it again and again and again but we were talking about these low content books mm -hmm. now she has two years almost two years of focus fridays videos videos which i tell y'all in in the um, self-publishing support group that need to be transcribed, turned into a blog. So she got, she got two year of videos. Could you imagine how many blogs that is? Like seriously, could you imagine how many blogs that is? Mm. That needs, that, that is so many blogs and that is a lot. You doggone right, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a lot of blogs. So you don't have, that's what I'm saying. You guys don't have to create any more content. Just keep doing what you're doing and learn how to leverage and scale the content that you already have. Low content and, and, and not, now this is even more than low content, right? right? I even heard a Focus Friday book. We talked about that, seven, seven low content books that you can write today. Hmm. Now, if there's two sets of eyes in the home and then there's, I, I've been on the Focus Fridays. I was so when she when when I first when I was on it more often when she first started doing them, the numbers were on there was so crazy. I talked to her, I said, Girl, do you know how many people are watching you? And she like, and no, I, like, I don't no. see them. I don't see them. <laughs> I just go on there and do what the Lord tell me to do. Yeah. She said, we are running over an hour, but this is some good information. She said, I don't see him. No, no. Where did they? I said, girl, you got a lot. Hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But now taking that, not only doing blogs, now maybe getting with some spiritual network, Christian network, Christian magazine, now transcribing them into blogs, but right. also a Focus Friday book, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That That is a low content and then she already has an audience for it. Hundreds of people watch her on Focus Friday. They do. Like, they do. Yeah, she'd be like, I don't know. I'd be like, I don't. I be wishing for them numbers. Dr. Pelzer told me one time, Coach, I had 15 people in the Zoom room with a married couple. I said, I can't get 15 people on nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get 15 people in the Zoom, and she had 15 people and a married couple. You guys are amazing. You guys keep showing up in all of your awesomeness, right? You you guys are just amazing, amazing. You y'all be thanking me 
But honest, you guys have validated me out here in these internet streets. <laughs> if it were not for you, I would not be the self-publishing coach, the speaker, the three-time Amazon best-selling author that I am today. I do not believe it's a fearless leader of the Aspire Christian Authors self-publishing support group. And I want to invite you in to the group, um, bit.ly forward slash purpose to prosper. But if you are interested in writing and self-publishing a book, we are opening up, I'm opening up class, opening up the doors for registration. Um, I got five seats left at the discounted rate. This I be the- trying to tell people, I be like, we're your book here. And I be like sending, t- uh, tagging your page. Like y- y'all, what are y'all waiting for? I know you got a book in you, I, you know, cause I feel like, I've been blessed. I want you to be blessed. Right. And this is the this is who you who can bless you. This is who is willing to help you to be blessed. So stop sleeping on your goals, your aspirations, you know, the, your blessings that you can help bless other people. And like you said, I be coming to you like, what's wrong with them? Why they don't bite on it? I'll be like, <laughs> why they don't bite on it? It's a, it's awesome. You know, like Dr. Pelzer says all the time, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And, and, and you know, I meet people and I don't have to convince them. You know, right. you guys have like, yeah, the, the ones that, there's the ones that's ready. It's the one, it's some that's ready. And when you talk to them, they say, all they, they was just waiting on me, right? They just waiting right. on you. They just right. waiting on the Dr. Pelzer. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? And then on the other ones, you got to pull teeth, right? We just leave them where they be. When they ready, they will come, Right. right. Um, and, and, and that's it, but we have, so I'm taking five at the discounted rate. We sold two seats already. We have three seats left. And this program is how to write and self-publish your book in 90 days. And it's the writing and the self-publishing. So they'll have me three weeks, three weeks face-to-face. And then we'll, we'll go into, um, their pre-sales, um, their pre-sales, and then they're going to be releasing within 90 days. So we are offering that, um, you guys, and that's an amazing discounted rate. If you guys are interested, anybody interested, DM me for further details, and I will be more than happy to give them to you. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. This has been an amazing time. I thank you so much, woman of God. I thank you for showing up and showing out. Focus Fridays has been amazing, amazing, absolutely amazing. So just think about that. So many things that you can do with it. Your podcast, you guys. Your platforms, I'll go into t- teacher mode. Y'all know me. Right. Uh, you can take them, take them videos, and you can do nine different things with them. You can right. really take one live Facebook and do nine different things. And this is the reason. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is the reason why I always tell y'all to, to do those videos between nine and 12 minutes. Okay. Not just because the people's attention span are not that long. They'll stay, you know, if it's good. They'll stay with you on live a little bit for a little while. Right. But no, so that you'll make it, it's easy to tr- transcribe. So if you do not between nine and 12 minutes, mm-hmm. that's a that's a blog that's easy to that's a video that's real easy to transcribe. And then if you got a part two to the to the video series, mm-hmm. then do a part two and then do another nine to 12 minutes. Right. You know, and then if you got a part three, then do that. And don't don't go for 40 minutes and then want to transcribe that whole 40 minutes. It's a well. mess. I, no, I don't okay. be trying. I be I be hearing the Holy Spirit, so I can't. Hey, give it just, to me. He be he be downloading, be downloading. I will be like, oh, okay. And oh no no know. no! Yeah, when you can't control. <laughs> right, like he he told me the the other day one one Friday I was doing it and he, it was you know how cold it's been. My paper flew on the floor. It flew on the floor. I was like, oh, I just lost my notes. That meant that I really had to go ba- based on what I heard, what I studied, all of that. And it was just, but he, you know, he get the flowing and he get the talking and it's just like, I got to give it to him. Yes. All right. Well, don't stop giving it to him. All right. We are not going to stop giving it to y'all either on yes. every Monday, Wednesday and Friday right here on the No Factor. I'm Prophetess Reverend Rita Monique Henderson. I'm a self-publishing coach. I am a speaker. I am the CEO of Five Old Christian Publishing and three-time Amazon best-selling author. Minister Linda is getting ready to, to get that title as well. She Amen. is co-authoring with me as I'm co-authoring with the visionary author, Apostle Deraje Zorn in our Fluence 365. So she's going to have 
and uh, she's going to have her first anthology yes. and we're going to say first Amazon best-selling author and in the next few weeks our book is going to come out we did a book together now yes yes I think look. It's like 30 <laughs> look it's nothing but God it's nothing but God Look, we did. Look, that's legacy making. That is legacy making. Yes. Right oh yes. my God. Oh like my, God. my like my mom told me growing up. She said, "Follow the carrot, chase the carrot." You know, horses chase carrots when they're trying to run in a race. I'm not trying to run against her. I'm trying to run to catch up to her. So, he, <laughs> who's my carrot? Reverend Rita is my carrot. Who I'm trying to catch up to. Oh, I yes. you. I love you. I told her like this. I told her like my business coach told me. Listen, success leave clues. Follow the clues. I'm out. I love y'all. Peace. Shalom. Peace. Good night. Good night.